Well, let's spend a little time learning some of the um, trees that grow at the higher elevations of the Appalachian Mountains. I'm covering a fairly large geographic area in this channel from the Western Ohio Valley all the way down to the North Georgia Mountains all the way up to the end of the Appalachian Mountains in the United States at least which would be Maine and I'm also including the lower Great Lakes which would be basically south of the Thumb in Michigan and northern Michigan has these trees I don't believe it's too common to find them south of the Thumb in Michigan but along the higher elevations of the spine of the Appalachian Mountains the balsam fir and the red spruce are common trees. If you go far enough south in the Appalachian Mountains, balsam fir is called Fraser fir. They are considered separate species, but they look very similar. We're going to concentrate on the uh, balsam fir today because we're in um, Ulster County, New York. We're at 2,500 foot elevation here, and we're still in some, uh, some ash and some maple and some birch. And we're climbing a mountain that's 4,100 feet high that is covered in balsam and red spruce at the summit. So we'll be learning these trees as we climb today. They're easy to tell apart, but they grow in community with each other. It's called the spruce fir forest, and it's common in the higher elevations of these mountains, especially in New England and upstate New York. So let's move on up the mountain a few miles and start studying these guys. And we've climbed about 400 feet higher in elevation here. There's been eastern hemlock all along this hike. And that can be found at low elevations all the way down to sea level in the proper habitat. At this latitude, you start seeing balsam fir and red spruce, usually above 2,500 feet. We're close to 3,000 feet here, and I'm starting to see some balsam fir. Haven't seen a red spruce yet, but they'll be coming. This balsam fir is growing on this boulder. It's not too big yet. And right across the trail here, we've got some eastern hemlock. So to the untrained eye, these could be confused, but the needles are much shorter on this eastern hemlock than they are on the balsam fir. The bark is also different as well. We're gonna hold off on the bark for a few minutes. We'll get back to that when we find a larger specimen. There's some obvious difference in the bark. No, how many cones we're going to find today on these balsam fir trees. They tend to be at the top of the larger trees and they don't always fall off. So let's see what we, what comes along. But here's our um, balsam fir on the left. And the needles on that are about as long as that U.S. currency quarter. And on the right is a hemlock with much shorter needles. But they are both needles that are flat. And they both have a white stripe on the back, or two white stripes with a dark line in between them. So a flat needle that's longer is from the balsam fir or the Fraser fir, and the shorter needle with the white two white stripes on the back is from the eastern hemlock. Just for location purposes, this is a hike that's popular. If you want to learn these trees, and if you park at the western access to the Slide Mountain Wilderness here, along U uh, Ulster County Road 47, there's a parking lot there circled, and that purple dot right next to the tip of my pen is where we are right now, and this is where we're starting to find these trees. As we climb today, we'll find some red spruce and some more balsam fir to study. And I've come just a few hundred feet up the trail from those uh, small balsam trees. And I found what could have been the seed source for those youngins. And these are some full-size balsam trees. And I'm going to study them here before we get up into the true spruce fir forest because they're easier to see here when they're surrounded by yellow birch trees. And what we have here is a two balsam fir trees about 60, 70 feet high. That's full height. Look at how pointed the crown is. It's a very narrow angle at the top. And the red spruce would look much different than that. And the silhouette of the red spruce would be much different than that. So this is the form of the balsam fir tree. It does get wider as it comes down and it usually has branches most of the way down. But um, if you're looking at the silhouette of a spruce or a fir tree, the fir tree is definitely a, a narrow, narrow angle at the top. And we'll continue on in just a few minutes here. 
And we've climbed up towards the summit of Slide Mountain here, about 300 feet higher than the last video. And we're in what's called the spruce fir zone now. Mostly fir right here. I've climbed up on some ledges where the soil's thin. And we got some paper birch hanging out in here. I've done some work with paper birch in the past on this channel. But it's bark peels, just like paper. It can be used as a fire starter. We can see the crowns of these balsam fir trees swaying in the wind. And it's even a little misty up here today. This spruce fir zone is off in a place where the weather is much cooler. And these balsam fir and red spruce trees often grow in colder climates, especially in Canada. Matter of fact, the balsam fir goes all the way across Canada, all the way, I believe, to Alaska. It um, follows the colder latitudes all the way west. Here's our balsam fir with its unique bark. There's no other tree in the area covered by this channel that has sap blisters, except for the balsam and Fraser firs. I'll add Fraser fir when I get to make a trip down to that area. Um, until then, we'll stick with the balsam fir, but they're almost identical. And here's a blister about the size of my thumbnail. And if I pop it, you can see that clear substance is like Vaseline or motor oil. And it's very fragrant. The, bo the uh, boughs or the leaves of these balsam trees, when you crunch them in your fingers, or the sap, have a very fragrant aroma. Now, this tree has gotten wet from this misty rain that came through overnight. Weather's trying to clear today, but uh, pretty high humidity here. I don't know if these trees are going to dry out, but this one did. This is a balsam fir without its bark being wet. This was sheltered by the surrounding trees. This isn't a very large tree, but it also has these sap blisters. So it's about the size of your fingernail, and if you pop it, you do get that sap oozing out. So the red spruce doesn't get that way. And none of, the other, none of the other evergreens get that way except for the Fraser fir. And we're starting to see some red spruce as we climb this mountain. This one's soaking wet and the needles are out of reach. So let's hold off and see if we can find one that's a little easier to study as we keep climbing. Well, and as you approach the summit of Slide Mountain here in Ulster County, New York, you're rewarded with some views and that mist that was uh, shrouding the trail an hour or two ago has lifted for the most part. And as you look off in the distance there, you can see that's the uh, spruce fir zone on the surrounding limb of this mountain. Um, unfortunately, the spruce is not to be found on this limb of Slide Mountain. I only found one or two trees that were just not good for teaching. This side of, this west side of Slide Mountain is dominated by balsam fir. So a good study of the uh, spruce, the red spruce is not going to be possible today. I'm at the point where I need to turn around. This is November, daylight is limited. I started at 9 a.m. and I need to be out of the woods by 3. So um, look at the uh, shape of the top of those balsam trees, the balsam fir there, nice and pointed. And we'll continue on with the study of red spruce in the future when I can find some better trees and more of them for teaching. But we're up at about 4,000 feet here. You can see some lakes way in the background there. That's the water supply for New York City, the Ashokan Reservoir, one of many that are in this area. And meanwhile, I did have a red spruce bough with me. I found it at the campground where I was staying, but was planning on doing the lesson up here. The guidebook said there was spruce and fir up here, but um, there is not on this side of the mountain. So our balsam fir is on the left with its flat needles. And the red spruce that I had at the campground is a much bushier branch. It is not flat needles. They are kind of squarish. If you rotate one in your thumb, between your thumb and your index finger, you'll feel that it feels like a little square. And the cones off that red spruce tree are more the size of that U.S. currency quarter. So this is just, we're going to hold off on the red spruce. We'll get back into that in the future. Let's make this a, a day of balsam fir and a great place to study it here in the mountains of upstate New York. And you can see as you get a view of this trail, this is almost all evergreens up here. Almost entirely balsam fir at this elevation. It's just a little too chilly up here and too breezy. 
and too snowy in the winter time for the uh, hardwood trees to survive. So we'll continue on with the study of these high ele elevation trees in the future and we'll continue on with the red spruce when we find some good teaching examples.